Hi guys, this is Robin with Weight Loss Apocalypse. This is a clip from a session I did yesterday. This client and I have been working together for a couple of weeks. She is a raging bulimic. Um, and she's been getting um, outpatient therapy. She found my YouTubes about five months ago. She finally decided to contact me after outpatient therapy was not working. Um, or her, her situation was getting worse and she actually started noticing that she was starting to do some of the anorexic things that people with anorexia were doing. Anyhow, in, she's been doing really well and really absorbing what we've been um, working on with body image and she was kind of thrown for a loop this past weekend when she thought her dog, her dog might have cancer. And so this kind of threw her into a spiral around feeling sorry for herself, feeling inadequate to handle it, feeling bad about her situation. And then she started noticing the negotiations for food going up. And so this is such a good session from the beginning, talking about that entitlement and she thought oh my god i just can't hate this foods i'm addicted to them and how i i talked to her about you know the reality of what's going on that we have to look at you know why she's negotiating for it and early in this session um those for you in patreon will be able to see this but in early on in this session um i had said no 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 at some point you started feeling sorry for yourself and i talk we talked uh, a lot about the victim position and being a martyr and being constantly disappointed by your life and then feeling um, like you are a victim of your life because it's so shitty. So anyways, that's kind of where she went. And that's very, in fact, that's, that's, that's like every person I work with has a degree of that victim positionality and feeling um, pissed off kind of that their life sucks. And it gives them an entitlement to eat this food that goes against their thin ideology. That's where binging comes in. So we are actually addressing in this clip, this is the little 10 minute clip of us addressing her fear of the dog having cancer and going into that fear of death and comparing like what would, how she would actually respond versus her assumption um, and fear of what would happen um, and feeling sorry for herself. So you can get a sense of the difference in this clip. So, and um, I like this, this clip because you can get a sense as we're going and talking through the actual process of if the dog dies, how she would feel and looking at it from a different perspective rather than feeling sorry for yourself. What happens when you actually can accept that it happened? What shift occurs in your perception of it? And you can you can listen along with this clip. And then there's the end of this session where we actually go in further into the binging aspect and what she should do now that she has already binged and she's in a place where she feels better about her situation. And normally she would purge at this point. And so I'm, I begin to direct that aspect of what she should do now. You know, does she restrict tomorrow? Does she go exercise tonight or tomorrow? So, all right. Enjoy this clip. If you want to watch this whole session, um, you're going to need to join Patreon. The link is below. It's a $5 a month membership or donation to support weight loss apocalypse. If you're struggling and you need guidance, you can work with me. Um, there's a link to my website below as well. You'll need to fill in the information um, consult request form. Get that sent in. I'll respond very quickly, usually within the hour. And um, you can get scheduled to talk this evening or even tomorrow. So, all right, enjoy. Say that by uh, with without feeling sorry for yourself. Can you handle your dog's potential death, whether it's now or in five years or whatever, without feeling sorry for yourself? I want to. Okay, that's good, that's good. So what would it take, right? So remember, did we go through the experience of exposure and people saying you're fatter? Did we go through that embarrassment? Okay, you remember how you went through that and you're like, oh, I could totally handle that. 
Okay, this is similar. Can you handle the loss of a loved one? What I mean by handle is accept. Can you accept the loss of a loved one? I, I want to. Okay, so I'm going to keep on asking it. I get that you want to, but you need to go in and actually ask yourself if you could. So what the way you way you find out is you go into it in your mind as if it is happening. Okay? So that I think that might be where you're getting uh, you're, you're stopping in this is you're saying I don't want to look at it, but I I I I want to. <laughs> but if I look at it, it's going to be painful. Well, let's do it. This is what this is what I'm here for. Go. I want you to imagine that your vet is going to call, and we're just going to give it the worst case scenario. Your dog has cancer; it should die within days. They think you should put it down. You're going to put it down this weekend. Let's do it. Okay. Of course, that's so sad. Of course, you're going to be heartbroken. Of course, it's going to be painful. And there's loss, right? What happens the moment you accept that as the the end of his chapter in your book or hers? I don't know if it's boy or girl, but yeah, he's gonna he has a chapter in your life's book, and this is where it comes to a close. Are you gonna be okay with that? Do you feel like you could move forward? Doesn't mean the chapter is you can't, you know. Just means that this part of your your connection with this other animal is coming to a close. How do you how do you feel about that? It hurts. That's that's normal and I think that's okay. That's not something we need to remove. It's painful to have loss, right? Or the end. There's an end here. What happens once you get past the loss? Because loss does move transition. There is an evolution to loss. What happens after that? I want you to stay in that. This is the end of the chapter with this dog in your life's book. Remember, there's a big book here, and we're, we're now closing this chapter with the dog. Life goes on. And how do you feel about that chapter? You pissed I about it? You feel sorry for yourself because of that chapter? No. Oh, see, that's, do you hear how ridiculous that sounds now? <laughs> it sounds really freaking dumb. So what's now how do you feel about that chapter? I feel okay. I feel grateful. Yes. Like honored. Right. It's so special. It's like beautiful. It's a beautiful chapter, right? Isn't that wonderful? And the gratitude is magnificent. It's massive, isn't it? It's almost undescribable the gratitude you you have for that chapter. It's like what a what a gift. That was a gift. And you know that dog has a book too and you're in its chapter. You're in its book and it feels the same way, doesn't it? Okay. Can you handle that? I know you can. In fact, aren't you grateful? Notice how it changes from poor me to I am so grateful. I am so grateful. So much gratitude and love that is I can feel and experience and share. And it's beautiful. It's sacred. It's as a sacred relationship. Do you see how that this it, there's a transformation when you go into accepting the end of it? I want you to I want you to think about what happens when you accept accept reality here. What happens when you actually can accept it? What happens to that feeling of poor me? 
when you go through acceptance? What happens to that self-centric poor me? Oh, it just, you, you become grateful. It shifts to gratitude. You went right there. I'm so, you're, you're in this with me. You're doing a good job. Went right to gratitude. Which one would you rather feel? Sorry for yourself or gratitude? Right. And don't you feel it, it actually brings you even more connected to your, the beloved animals that we have sacred relationships with? You, you end up feeling even more connected as animals together. You become an animal with them, you know. There's something, something really beautiful about it to me. I think the, the illusion is that when you feel sorry for yourself or you become a victim, that it's going to actually do something positive. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And really, it just keeps you disconnected. And that's what you experience is disconnection. Right? And that's what you're afraid of is disconnection. But when you actually go into accepting reality, you're so connected. You're so connected, and it's so beautiful. So to someone who's really connected, death is is obviously painful. My mother just died, you know, a little over a year and a half ago of cancer. It was terrible. I feel so connected to her. I felt connected to her as she was dying. And the chapter that she played in my life was so sacred, right? Why I feel sorry for myself? Do you see how um, small that perception is compared to the small of being pissed off about it or feeling victimized of it or feeling sorry for yourself? How small and diminishing that would be of my mother. Yeah. Right? Like, I'm not grateful for what I got. I want you to like, uh, go ahead. Go, I need you to go ahead. Go ahead. I'm, I'm listening. No, I feel like that's um, the same way I am in my relationship. Yep. Um, right now, uh, with a very, very loving, patient, and understanding man, but mm. he's going to school to be an English teacher, so he's not in the best financial situation. So... So I feel sorry for myself a lot, like, or that sense of entitlement, like, I have my life in order. <laughs> and, and here I am, like, you know, like, I can't eat, like, we can't really go out to eat <laughs> as much as I would like to. We can feel like I eat. <laughs> sorry. No, I'm glad you're yeah. kind of giggling about it right now. Like, what are you, what? <laughs> So I, I was just going to tell you when, when you were beginning to talk is that this is the core of your eating disorder. Poor me. That is the core of it. The One of the main roots of it. Yeah. So if yeah. you want to recover, you're going to have to start at the, at, at the seed, rip the seed open and go into the center and ask, am I capable of living life and all of its baggage? Do I, am I okay that pretty much nothing's going to go right? And what is right anyways? And who the hell is to telling us what right is? Because ultimately, everything has gone right in your life. It just is made to seem wrong because there's a fantasy that you're holding it to. And that fantasy is actually causing all this disconnection and feeling poor, poor about life. 
and not really appreciating. It's kind of keeping you from gratitude. Gratitude is, didn't that feel good when you were talking about the gratitude you'd have for this animal? Didn't it feel good? Isn't that what really what you're looking for? Is that feeling? It's a beautiful feeling. It's very hard to describe other than I feel grateful. But isn't it just massive? Wouldn't you rather that than go back into what it feels like to feel sorry for yourself? Me, 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 dad, you know? So disconnecting. Oh, yeah, I, can, I can go back there. <laughs> so narcissistic. So self-centered. So completely delusional. Right? You're going to have to grow up. You're going to have to, you're going to have to <sighs> mature. Right? I think, I think what this is going to take for you is just recognizing that the way you fantasized life as a child and as a teenager is, as an adult. <laughs> well, it carried into your adulthood. This is very juvenile, so this isn't something that you created in adulthood. It was created in a juvenile state of mind, okay. right? As an adult, is this something you would teach your, teach uh, people that way no. of I know. So it's not a, your current wisdom is aware this is not nor This is not, I don't want to use that word. This is juvenile. But for some reason, you're just carrying it into your adulthood, even though your adulthood and your wisdom says, this is, I don't like it. This sucks. I don't want to. But you're holding yourself to this juvenile fantasy of what life's like. And now you're an adult and you're like, clearly what I fantasized was so naive. That's not how life works. There's infinite influence on your outcomes. There's an infinite influence on the environment. There's infinite reasons why your dog might have cancer. It's infinite. Can't control it so much. And if you want to control it, that takes over your entire awareness, right? You don't get freedom. You're a slave to whatever you're afraid of. That's all you think about, right? Oh. oh, gosh. I feel like shit. <laughs> aren't, aren't you glad? I'm like, oh, God. Poor me. <laughs> Poor me. I should go get a zucchini braid and a chocolate chip muffin and some strawberries with condensed milk and two oh, small bags of chip, oh. and I'm going to blame it on yeah. addiction. Never mind the fantasies that make me feel that my life sucks. And then the fact that I'm a victim and feel sorry for myself. And that from there, I feel entitled to all sorts of self-abuse that I'm complaining about. God. I know, I'm such a bitch, right? My God, Robin, you should know. You should know. I, I, I deserve to have a big house, a <laughs> nice car, and get married in fucking Greece. Right. You know? And you're supposed to have, like, a big ass and a small waist and big boobies and perfect hair. And you should never age. And you shouldn't have My to dog work. Should never die. <laughs> no, no, your dog shouldn't die. You're special. It's funny. I'm glad you're laughing about it. <laughs> <laughs>